What is going on guys? In this video, I wanna show you how to set up a website using WordPress on AWS. And I'm also gonna show you how to register for a domain name as well. So by the end of this, you're gonna have a domain of your choosing and also a WordPress server. And that's only gonna cost you around $3.50 a month, which is a really good deal when you compare that to something like GoDaddy and some other competitive options as well. Uh, so here I am in the AWS management console. If this is your first time on AWS, you need to register for an account first. And I'll put a video that I have that walks you through how to do that in the description section below. Uh, but once you log into your account, you're gonna wanna go to the find services section here and type in route 53. And Route 53, as you can see here below, it's a scalable DNS and domain name registration service. Uh, like it says, it lets you register domains. It also has features that allow you to create endpoints so that you can route users to certain applications if they hit a certain endpoint. Um, but we're not gonna get too much into the details of Route 53 here. I'm just gonna show you how to create your domain. Uh, so once you get to the dashboard page here, we're gonna go over to the left where it says register domains, and we're gonna click on register domains. All right, so I don't have any domains registered on this account. If you have a domain from another provider, maybe something like GoDaddy, uh, you can transfer that over to AWS pretty easily by clicking transfer domain up over here and then following the prompts. But since we don't have one of those, we're gonna register from scratch. So I'm gonna click on register domain up here in the top left. Um, so the next step here is to choose a domain name. So whatever you're looking for, this is where you'd put it in. So mine is called AWS Simplified simplified okay so now over here on the right you can pick whatever suffix that you want uh, notice that there's different prices here for each one um, so like .com.au is $15 the normal .com is $12 so depending on the one that you pick um, this is the yearly cost so keep that in mind when you are picking this uh, I'm just going to leave that as .com right now because when you click on check here it's going to give you a list of domains that are available I happen to know that yeah AWS simplified.com is already unavailable so that sucks for me um, but looking here down below, we can see here, these are some of the open options that are still available. So AWS insight.net, AWS simplified.io. I actually like that one quite a bit. Uh, another option is AWS simplified.net. So I'm actually going to go with IO and notice here that it's actually $39 per year, as opposed to something like AWS simplified.net, that one is only $11 a year. Now, once you decide the combination of your domain name and your suffix, you're gonna go ahead and click on add to cart. Now over here on the right, it's just gonna ask us if we want to sign up for one year or more years. Uh, I'm just gonna sign up for one year here. I don't see the benefit of doing it for more than one year at this point. Uh, now we're gonna scroll down and go ahead and click on continue. Now at this point, it's asking us for some contact information and you can select depending on what you are. Uh, if this is for a person, a company, a association or public body, you need to fill out all this information here and then go all the way down to the bottom. Make sure that you have this uh, ticked here for privacy protection. You wanna make sure this is set to enable. Uh, that means that people that are just running who is checks on your domain are not gonna be able to see all this information that you vend out. Uh, if you set it to disable, they will be able to do that. Um, so if that's something that you're worried about, make sure that you have it set to enabled so then you can block that information from showing. Now, keep in mind, depending on the suffix that you used, so if you use .com or .net or .io or whatever, there are different sets of information that are available by default. Uh, so for instance, if you're using .io, I believe I checked before and it shows the country and the state. That's the only revealing information that it'll show if someone uses the who is lookup command on your domain name. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, the one thing that I want to share with you is that if you're worried about that, um, I have a website here that shows you the information that gets vended out with the specific suffixes for your endpoint. Uh, so if you come to this website, I'm going to leave this in the description section below so that you can take a look at this. Uh, and you scroll down, mine is going to be .io, so I'm going to go to the I section, and then we go to .io. And then we click on see this thing. So if we take a look at what we're shown here, we can see that for this one under privacy protection, we see that all information is hidden except state, province, and country. So if you have that privacy protection setting set as enabled, that's the functionality that you're gonna get. Everything is hidden for you. So just keep that in mind when you're deciding on which suffix to use for your domain. Let's head over back to the console now. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and fill out all this different information here and I'll click on continue and bring it to the next page when I'm all done. 
Okay, so I filled out all my information here and I clicked on continue at the bottom of the page. Uh, at this point, it's just gonna show you some confirmation details about what you filled in the form. So down here under managing DNS for your domain, this is basically just telling you it's gonna set up a hosted zone. We don't need to care about that right now. Uh, this setting down here asks you if you want to have auto renew on or off. Uh, I'm gonna keep mine on disabled because I expect to have this website for quite a bit. The next step is to just acknowledge the terms and conditions. I highly suggest you just take a quick little glance at this and read it through just so you know what you're getting into. So at this point, all you need to do is go ahead and click on complete order once you have verified all the details of your registration and you should be good to go. So I'm just clicking that right now. And so the order has been successfully submitted and it's currently being processed. I'm not sure exactly how long this is gonna take to be honest, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it over the next couple of hours and days. Now keep in mind when we're on the next screen here, this is basically telling us that you may need to do an email validation. So go ahead and check your email and click on that confirmation uh, email if you received one. Okay, so we're back in the default AWS console right now. So the next step that we want to do is go ahead and create that light sale instance. So here in the console, I'm just going to type in light sale in the find services dialog box. Click on light sale. And once this loads, here we go. So we have this nice little uh, kind of welcome screen that's just showing us a little bit about what Lightsail has to offer, uh, telling us that we have no instances right now. That's going to change really quick. Um, and then some jazz up here that we don't really need to care about. So on this default screen, the first thing that we need to do is obviously click on create instance. And this is just going to verify my location. So I am, I guess I'm closest to Montreal. Uh, I'm in Toronto, but I'm going to set this to US East 1. That's the one that I normally use. Um, so if you're not in uh, North America, then basically pick whichever one is closest to you. If you're in Germany, pick Germany. If you're in Paris, use Paris. Basically pick the, the availability zone that's closest to you or where you believe the majority of your traffic is going to be originating from. Uh, that's going to ensure the best performance for your WordPress instance. Um, so you can also change your availability zone down here. You don't really need to do that for this exercise. This is just for more advanced users, really. Um, next, we need to pick our platform. So we're going to be using Linux slash Unix. So just keep that selected. And the next section is just asking us for uh, what blueprint do we want to use? So there's, you can see there's a couple different options here to get you started really quickly with a whole bunch of different uh, software setups. So a mean stack for uh, Mongo, Express, Angular, and Node, just a Node.js stack, a LAMP stack is also a very popular one as well. A whole bunch of different options for you, but this is a WordPress tutorial. So we're going to be selecting WordPress here, or just leaving it as default as you can see. Um, and then we are going to leave all this blank for now. Actually, I think you need to click on this guy. Actually, you know what? We can leave this as default because we're going to be SSHing uh, using a different way. Um, so automatic snapshots create a backup of your instance and attached disk on a daily schedule. Uh, so this may be a good idea for you to enable automatic um, snapshots. Keep in mind, there's probably going to be an additional cost for this. I don't expect it to be very much, but uh, you may need to read a little bit about that uh, before you go ahead and select that all willy nilly. So down here is where you choose your instance plan. And let me just explain to you the different tiers here that'll kind of influence you on what you want to use. So what are we actually looking at here? So we're looking at different prices, obviously. So $3.55 all the way up to 40 and even higher. Um, so what does this stuff actually mean? And if you look down here in the details, you can start understanding it a little bit. So what we're seeing here are the specifications of the computer that's going to be hosting your applications. Uh, so 512 megabytes of RAM, one virtual CPU, um, a pretty reasonable hard drive uh, for an SSD, and one terabyte of storage. As you kind of slide up the scale to the right here, you can see the specifications are all getting much, much better. And that's why the cost is going up as well. But if you have like just a starting website or just kind of like a little blog that you're just starting out, go ahead and start with a $3.50 one. Uh, and then if you notice that, you know, your website's been a little slow or performance isn't exactly what you were expecting, you can go ahead and bump it up to each tier. And this should be pretty easy to do even after you pick an initial uh, type. You can always upgrade it to something different later. Um, so that's what this kind of stuff corresponds to. And there's also like different selections here, different filters based on the specifications of the actual hardware. So you can do like which ones are better memory optimized, processing optimized, storage optimized, network transfer optimized. I mean, 
this is more for advanced users, but I would just suggest you to go with $3.50 one a month and you get the first month free, which is cool. So you don't have to actually pay for anything unless you're satisfied with how this all works. All right, so now we're going to scroll down and we need to identify our instance. Your light cell resources must have unique names. Sure, so WordPress 1 and we can just actually leave it like that. There's no point in really changing that for this exercise. But if you have a lot of these servers, then maybe you just want to give it a unique name so that you can quickly identify uh, which one this is. So at this point, we're all done here. So we're going to go ahead and click on Create Instance. Uh, sometimes this does take a few moments and actually that was pretty quick, but you see here that it is starting up. Um, so for those of you that are more in the more interested in AWS, you'll notice that if you try to go to your EC2 section of AWS and look for an instance, you won't find it there. And that's because LightSail is kind of like a uh, contained sandbox. So all of the infrastructure that you're creating here is, although that you're the owner of it, it's not going to appear in the EC2 section of your account. Uh, this is in contrast to how some different um, AWS services work, but just keep that in mind. Everything is going to be contained to the light sale application. So everything you build in here pretty much stays in here. Um, so we can see at this point that the WordPress server finally got um, started up. So we also see that there's an IP here and I don't remember if this is actually a public IP. So I'm going to try and hit this IP uh, and you see nothing happens here. So this is a private IP right now of that WordPress instance. And in a few moments, we're actually gonna get a public IP where we can access it from the public internet. And then we're gonna wire that all the way back to our domain name. So when you hit our domain name, you're gonna hit the WordPress instance. But the next thing that we wanna do here is actually SSH into our WordPress instance so we can get the password um, for, the, for the instance itself so we can log into the WordPress console. So I'm gonna click on this button here and it's gonna connect us to an instance. Uh, an error occurred, you know what, I think it's actually still starting up. So I'm gonna give this another few moments um, just to make sure that this starts up successfully. And then once uh, I get the all clear, I'm gonna SSH into this and bring it back. Okay, so I am back again, and thankfully this thing has successfully started up. I don't think the actual status changes here. It's always just set to running. Uh, yeah, so that's the case. So let's just hit this um, this IP that I previously said was a private one, but it actually is not. This is the public IP. So if you go to uh, over here, you can see that this is the um, kind of default WordPress page that you get uh, out of LightSail. So now if you go to the WP slash admin um, login portal, basically for any WordPress site, if you just do slash WP dash admin, this will bring us to our login page where we can kind of play with any of the settings um, for WordPress once we actually get signed in here. So the next question is like, what are my login credentials now, right? So that's basically what we need to do next. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so going back to my light sale tab, and I, again, this is why we need to SSH in because by default, the the default WordPress password and login are on the um, instance that you create in a file there. So we need to go and look at that file and see what the password is. So I'm going to click on this kind of weird looking thing, this terminal here. And so we should be able to connect to it. If you were still getting an error from before, just give it a few minutes. Sometimes it takes a little while to get started. So now we are basically inside this machine. We can see where we are. Uh, we can see the files there. We can print whatever directory we are in. We can create files. We can delete things. We can do whatever you want uh, when you're in a machine. But what we need to actually do now is just take a peek at a file that's going to have the password for our WordPress admin page. So what we're going to do is type in basically this command. So cat, C-A-T, dollar sign home, slash bitnami, B-I-T-N-A-M-I, underscore application, underscore password. And we're going to press enter. And what is spit out to us is our password for this WordPress instance. So make sure you copy it precisely. Um, so I'm just, oops. Maybe if I, yeah, let's do that. Uh, and I'm just gonna basically go over here, make sure I pasted this or I copied it successfully. So yes, that is done correctly. That is great. So at this point, we don't need anything more here. We can just close this out. And if we go back to our page now, our uh, with our IP address slash WP dash login, and we put in user as the username and the password that I just had on my clipboard, I'll paste this up here so you can see, that's what I pasted in. And you can do it, remember me if you want. 
Uh, click on login and boom, now we're in our WordPress website. Uh, and this is where you can do all the WordPress-y kind of things with your uh, application here. You can install plugins, you can change settings, you can change styles, download templates, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know too much about WordPress, but like for instance here, you can go to the theme section and pick a different theme. So like for instance, if I click on activate now, now I have this theme. And if we go back to uh, this page in a new tab, this new theme should be active. So there you go, it looks different. Um, so this is a little bit about WordPress, but I'm not gonna go too much into this. But the first thing that you should do when you get here is go ahead and change your password uh, for the user account or create a new account, but definitely change the password for this. Uh, let me see if I can remember where it is. Uh, probably in privacy, uh, bum, 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 users maybe. Yeah, so user, and then uh, I believe you can change the password here somewhere. Uh, there we go, new password. So you can generate that and uh, just modify that so that it's not living on the instance anymore or just create another user there so that you can log in using that one. So that's all it took to create this WordPress website, but you know we still have this problem where we have this IP address. Like how do I make it such that when I type in you know, AWS simplified.io, I go to basically whatever we have here, right? That's that's our end goal. Um, so let's go and do the next steps that we need to make that happen. So I'm gonna close the WordPress stuff. We don't need that anymore. And we're back on the light sale section. Now for this next part, what we need to do is create a static public IP. And what that basically means is that, like for instance, if we click on this WordPress instance, uh, we see this public IP here. This is the IP of a computer that is hosting your WordPress application. Now the problem is behind the scenes, this computer can fail. It physically can break down. Uh, maybe there's a networking problem. Maybe there's a whole bunch of other things. And this physical machine needs to be brought down. When it gets replaced, this IP can be a new IP. But the problem is we need to wire up the IP to our domain name. And this is so that we can consistently say where our domain is pointed to. So we need a, a static, not changing IP address for an instance so that we can tell our domain to point to it. Um, so unfortunately, by default, this is not gonna work. So we need to go ahead and create a, a fixed domain for the reasons that I just mentioned, right? Like if this goes down, this will be a different number, which is gonna cause everything to break. So let's go and do that now. So I'm gonna go to networking. And so what we wanna do now is over here, and of course there is a siren going by. Oh, it stopped, perfect. Uh, so we're gonna click on create static IP here. Um, and it is back. All right, I promise, I think it's gone now. Um, so you can set where you want your static IP location to be. Uh, I'm gonna set mine to US East one because that's where I created the WordPress instance. And then it's gonna ask you to select the instance. So WordPress one is the one that I wanna map it to. And you can just leave it with the default name here. Static IP one is fine. And then go ahead and click on create. And so now this IP, um, I'm not sure if, I don't think this is exactly the same one that we had before, um, but now you can see that this IP, it brings us back to the same page uh, for the WordPress site. However, this IP is never gonna change now. This IP is always gonna be the one that's associated with our WordPress site. So this is great for us because this is what we need in order to move on to the next step. We need that static IP. Uh, so everything looks to be set up. Let's just take a look. And oh, by the way, if you wanna disable this at any point, just click on detach here and that'll detach the public IP or the static IP rather from this machine. Uh, but nothing else really changed with this machine. It's still the same, everything is still identical, but now that machine just has a static IP that is not gonna change. So now let's go back to console and actually I think you can just click on, yeah, you can click on that. It'll bring us back to the console. And so we need to go into Route 53 now so that we can do a mapping of the, of the domain that we created earlier, the AWS simplified.io, to this IP address. So make sure that you have the IP address on your clipboard. Mine is right there, obviously you can see it. So now let's go to Route 53. So we're gonna type in Route 53 on the console, uh, click on the first guy there. And so what do we have now? So we have the domain that we created before. I'm just gonna click on domain just to remind you. Uh, so I created AWS simplified.io previously, so that's great. And I'm just gonna click on back now to show you what else we had. And we also have a hosted zone that got created for us by AWS when you create a domain. Um, so this is important because this is what's gonna let us kind of map the IP to your domain. So if you click on that hosted zone, 
um, you can see that uh, one got created with our same domain name, so awssimplified.io. So if I click on this, there's a bunch of information that gets shown to us. Let's take a quick look at what is going on here. Um, so maybe if I zoom out, this is a little bit better. There we go. Um, so we have two records that are present here. And actually, before I show you that, I just want to show you this thing. Actually, you probably need to know about because I got confused for a few days when I did this the first time. Um, so if you click on this little box here, it's not clear that this is even a button. But if you click on this, um, you can see details about the hosted zone. You also get to see the name servers that got assigned to the hosted zone when AWS created it. Now, the reason this is important is because on your registered domain, these name servers need to be equivalent on the ones that you have under the domain section of Route 53. So for instance, if you go into registered domains and click on the domain, in the top right, it'll show you some name servers like ones with the same numbers here, so 1151-15. So these numbers, these, these strings rather, need to be identical with whatever is on the domain in the domain section. So by default, if you did it like the way that we did it in this video, they'll be matching. But if not, this is something that you need to, to guarantee basically. So this caused a whole bunch of headaches for me uh, previously. So I hope that is helpful for someone. So moving back to this, uh, so what do we have here? So we have two records and um, like what do these things mean? NS, NS means name servers, SOA means uh, signature of authority. I, I can't remember exactly what SOA does, but for namespaces, it's basically, um, it's got the same, if you notice, the same strings that we had previously. And this is basically telling the public internet which servers to use when you're trying to resolve the IP address of AWS Simplified.io. It's going to use this these sets of servers that are on AWS. So these are AWS servers. We don't need to know about them. We just need to basically know that these two things exist. We're not going to be touching these two things. Uh, we're going to be creating an additional record now, two records rather, so that you can actually map that IP, the one that I have on my clipboard right here, um, to AWS Simplified.io. So what you're going to need to do is go to create record right here. Uh, we're going to use simple routing and that's fine. Go ahead and click on next. And now we're going to click on define simple record. Um, so for record name, we're going to leave this like blank. Don't put anything here and choose what endpoint. So we're going to select IP address uh, because we have an IP address, the public static IP address that we created in LightSail. So now I'm going to paste in my IP address that I have on my clipboard and we're going to leave this as A. Um, and also generally, you probably want to leave this as a pretty low number. This is the TTL, which stands for time to live. Don't want to get into it, but when you're first starting out, uh, leave this as a low number, then maybe come back to this later and set it to one day. But uh, I'm going to leave this on 300 in case we run into any debugging problems. And we're going to click on define simple record and click on create records now. And that got created. So that is good. Um, so we can see here that it's pointing to the IP address. The TTL is set as well. Um, so what this is going to do is basically make it so that when we type in AWS Simplified.io in our browser, it's going to route us to that IP address. But it isn't that simple. So this doesn't work right away. And if I actually probably try to do this right now, it, it probably won't work. Um, so you, Oh, it does. Okay, so our DNS actually got refreshed very, very quickly. Um, usually this takes a few hours for this to actually work correctly, but you can see for my, for my case, it actually was pretty instant. Uh, so that's absolutely fantastic. So um, that's working, that's great. So now AWS Simplified.io works, but what you will notice is that if I try to do www.awssimplified.io, that does not work. And that's because we need a different um, entry here so that we can map that entry, www.awssimplified.io, um, to the IP address as well. So we're gonna again go on Create Record, click on Simple Routing, Next, and Find Simple Record. Um, and we're gonna put in www there and value route traffic to same thing, IP address, put that in. And we're gonna leave this as A, I think A is correct. It's either A or C name and I can't remember which one. Uh, leave the settings the way they are, create records, and there you go. So www.awssimplified.io is now present and it's pointing to the same IP that the other one is pointing to. So let's try this now. 
www. Okay, so this actually may take a little bit um, to propagate. So this one didn't work right away, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it could have been actually because this should have been C name. Let me actually just try that really quick and see if that makes a difference. I don't think it does unless I am wrong, but www. Okay, IP. That looks good. Click on save changes. Okay, so that is saved. Let's try this again just to be sure. Um, w. Yeah, so this may take a little bit to propagate because uh, these are different records that basically get created and need to be propagated to DNS servers around the world. Uh, so that's fun. You can probably keep an eye on this uh, and see if it updates over the next few days. Uh, it can take up to two days for some of these DNS records to propagate. So that is pretty much it. That's all you really need to know in order to create a domain and map it to a WordPress instance. Uh, in terms of next steps, what you can also do is go and obviously play with your WordPress and change settings, change themes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I also get a lot of questions about how to do mail hosting on AWS. And this is great, like we've created a uh, website, we've created a WordPress instance, we got the domain, but now like how do I associate my email? Like I wanna use email, right? That's probably your next question. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think AWS actually has a product for this, but what I found out is there is a um, alternative which is a free email provider up to a reasonable limit called Zoho. So if you go to uh, Zoho, and yeah, zoho.com and click on this guy and create an account. They actually show you how to uh, link your newly created domain with this free email provider. So what you get at the end of it is like with this domain um, that I just registered, awssimplified.io, using Zoho, uh, I can end up creating like Daniel at awssimplified.io and host it on Zoho. So I can come to Zoho and just log in, check my email, send it out to other people, so on and so forth. Uh, so if you come in here and you just follow the tutorials, it's actually pretty simple. All you really need to do is uh, go to row 53 like we were doing before, and it's gonna ask you to create a few additional records in your hosted zone. Um, so if you go back to hosted zone and you know go here, it's gonna ask you to create a, an additional record, a couple other ones, uh, one for NX, sorry, not NX, um, MX, and another text record, um, and where is it? Yeah, sorry. MX is, is it rather, for, so it specifies the mail server and then a TXT record uh, to also show some metadata. But I'm not gonna show you how to do that here. It's pretty straightforward, so go ahead and follow those instructions. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned how to set up a website and how to register for a domain uh, and create a WordPress instance. And now you have a really cheap alternative, only $3.50 a month, as opposed to something like GoDaddy that charges like at least $12.99, probably more. Um, per month just to do this stuff. Um, more money doesn't always mean that it's a better solution. Uh, so again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out the other ones on my channel. Give me some of that YouTube juice, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll see you guys next time.